So speaking of culture <laughs> clash, <laughs> Wall Street Journal had what I thought was a really interesting article, which perhaps you know I uh, related to a little bit too much in terms of my own children, about how kids these days, um, they're not watching, you know, they're not really watching TV shows as much. They're not really watching like the Disney movies that I grew up on. It's a, there's a little bit of that, but it's not the, what they're really going for. Um, many kids are super into certain YouTube creators. Put this up on the screen from the Wall Street Journal. They say, sorry, mom and dad, but sitcoms, cartoons, and Disney movies are out. Kids today prefer to be entertained by the likes of Mr. Beast, Unspeakable, and Lanky Box. Um, and the basic dynamic here won't surprise anyone, which is that now that it's not just like, you know, one or two family TVs that everybody has to, you know, gather around or that's on in a way that everyone in the household can at least see what sort of content is being consumed, it's consumed, everybody has their own screen. And so they can choose their own entertainment options, including kids. And they are choosing things that are, you know, not that their parents are not even aware exist let alone have any interest in consuming alongside of them. And since it's on their own individual screen, they're not even getting sort of like ambient awareness mm -hmm. of what's going on. So uh, let me read you a little bit of this. They say an entertainment gulf has long existed between adults and their children. Stars and shows that attract kids can repel parents. Happened with Motley Crue, Beavis and Butthead, <laughs> South Park, even Elvis. Today, though, we consume media, the way we consume media has widened that chasm. Not long ago, a single TV blasted from the living room. Parents didn't always enjoy what their children watched, but at least they were exposed to it. And then they've got some quotes from parents who are, you know, posting on parent forum and forums. What do I need to know about the YouTuber Beluga? I just looked it up. <laughs> it is a cat said one reply <laughs> in the Chicago area. Emily Ryan's oldest son, Bear, started constantly talking about unspeakable. Who is that? What is that? Ryan, who's 40, recalls asking. Yes. I recently, Sagar, yes. had a very similar you experience You introduced to me to this gentleman, or yeah. these gentlemen, or whoever run this channel. Yes. Yeah. So my son, who is 10, and his bestie, we were driving them to their soccer game. Mm -hmm. And um, his best friend is, they're both really into YouTube. And his best friend is always interested in the fact that we're on YouTube. Yes. He's always talking to us about it, whatever. And he's also always shaming us. He's like, you only have a million subs. Like, Mr. You know how many right. subs Mr. Beast has. And so <laughs> we got into this conversation about some of the most popular YouTubers. And um, they started talking about some YouTube show called Skibbity Toilet, mm -hmm. which I was like, is that, I've never heard of that. Is that a real th thing? What is that? Put this up on the screen. <laughs> this is what this thing looks like. It's this bizarre animation, okay? It's these toilet head people who are apparently in a war with cameraman uh -huh. people. There's a lot of music. There's shorts. These are YouTube shorts, so they right. only last like a short period of time. It's I, And none of it really, at least to me, I watched several episodes, quote unquote, of this. It all just looks like this to me. None of it makes any sense. But this is getting like hundreds of millions of views on YouTube. And not only was I not aware of it, like I can't relate to it at all. Mm -hmm. So this one sort of landed close to home for me. Yeah, I, I I, mean, I think it's interesting. <laughs> it's funny because, you know, we make our living on YouTube. Yeah. As you said, it's funny whenever I meet kids, uh, the cool, the coolest thing is being a YouTuber. They're like, oh my God. I used to have a YouTube sticker on my phone, which I never thought about, which ended up being a big deal for a lot of my, yeah, a lot of children uh, that I have interacted with and, and met. It's funny because apparently when you ask them, every single one of them wants to be a YouTube creator. Like they all want to be YouTubers. Yeah. Whenever they grow up. It makes sense. I mean, and I kind of sympathize what the journal points to is like they're like parents have always been baffled by what their kids are into it's like like they pointed out south park and these other things uh which seemed ridiculous at the time to a lot of people who grew up with different type of animation but then this is like very cheap but it's funny and it's crude and then you know for this again i'm not gonna pretend i've never been an anime guy or I, some of our staff are very into anime I'm just looking at both of our producers and that's fine you know it's it's okay Especially for what these kids are into. I actually, the Mr. Beast one is the one that makes the most sense to me because I really like some of his videos. Yeah. Like my favorite video is his private plane. I, I really like to fly. So for me, like I loved watching that video. The Antar I've always been obsessed with Antarctica. He's got a great video on that. But even some of them, I mean, if you're into gaming, again, I'm not a gamer, but I know a lot of people who will watch hours of game content. Mm -hmm. Well, if that's something that you like to do, then watching, I mean, I sympathize with this. I love to watch anybody. 
who is the best at what they do. And especially if I can relate to it like a little bit. So if yeah. you're really into gaming and watch somebody who's in the top 0.01% or whatever of that, I would totally understand. It would help me think. I'd be like, oh, maybe I can do this. Whenever I'm into the game, it, it would be very entertaining. So I'm not going to put a value judgment on that. Oh, there's I, no I, value I think judgment. I just I think, think it's, it's interesting. So yeah. I even noticed a difference yeah. between my oldest daughter's 15 mm -hmm. when she was little versus now. When she was little, you know, it was very like she really loved Dora the Explorer and, you know, she really liked like she there were various Disney movies right. that she was really into. She liked this car cartoon, I think it was called Madeline. Then she was and mm -hmm. I was very aware of these things. Right. And then even when my son, who now is 10, when he was very little, I, there was more of a connection between what he was watching. But now my youngest daughter, who is six, like She's not really interested in watching a Disney movie, mm -hmm. which, you know, again, sense. very different. Yeah. She loves this channel on YouTube called Ninja Kids. Mm -hmm. She loves oh, these Ninja people. Yeah. She will do a, like, you know, the, the fandom is very large. She's always mm -hmm. asking for their merch and she wants to meet them. And do they do anything in public? Can I go see them? This is like, this is her thing. And so it just is very different. And she's still at an age where she doesn't have her own screen and her own device. So that's why I'm sort of more connected to what she's watching all the time versus the older ones are doing their own thing. Now, the last thing I'll say about Skibbity Toilet, which both our producers were like, yes. oh yeah, we know yeah, what that is. Yeah, they both knew it, yeah. And they watched it. Um, I asked though my 15-year-old yeah. my daughter about it and she was like, I have no idea what you're talking mm. about. And she's on TikTok all the time and apparently this is also on TikTok, but so that could be like a gender thing, I don't know. So, I mean, it just goes to show that even within this generation, the level of silo between the content that they're consuming and that they're being pitched and that the algorithm is serving is serving them is also really vast because yeah. I guarantee a lot of the boys that she goes to school with are all about skibbity toilet and she had zero awareness of it. Absolutely. Uh, the toddler video I'm aware of is uh, Miss Rachel. I know she's a big, big celebrity uh, amongst people who have babies. I saw a video of like a toddler meeting Miss Rachel and it was like watching, you know, watching a toddler recognize a YouTuber. I was just, it was interesting. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, huh, that's that's something. That they're really growing up with it from a very early age. Her, vi her videos have hundreds of millions of views. Yeah, her most popular video is 490 million. I don't know how she only has 6 million subscribers. That's wild. She should have a That's lot crazy. more than that. That's crazy. I don't even know um, who this person is. So uh, I guess it's because toddlers can't subscribe to YouTube channels. There you go. But I think <laughs> I think a lot of parents put it on. I mean, these some of these, they look good. It's like baby learning with Miss Rachel. Baby songs, speech and sign language. Wheels on the bus, more nursery rhymes and kids songs. Learn animals with Miss Rachel. So these all seem like very productive. If I was a parent, you know, I guess when I become a parent, I'll probably la lean on some of this stuff. It's interesting to think about. At the same time, it uh, relates a little bit to a news story I've been very interested in. Let's yeah. put this up there on the screen. Disney and Charter have ended their dispute and have restored ESPN and ABC to 15 million households. This dispute was very interesting because it pulled ESPN and ABC off the air for Charter communication subscribers. That's almost 15 million households in the U.S. which were unable to watch college football. They ended up coming back so that they could watch Monday Night Football for the big game that happened last night, the New York Jets, RIP, Aaron, or I, well, best Aaron Rodgers uh, out there. I hope he's feeling better. The interesting thing about the to dispute, his season, we'll say. yes, to his season. <laughs> uh, the best that we can say about Disney and Charter, and the reason I was watching it closely, is the fact that they were only able to come to some sort of consensus eventually was overpriced. And it's because Disney wanted more money for ESPN. And Charter was like, what are you talking about? More and more people are dropping cable. We don't even think cable is a huge part of our business anymore. And the only reason they even came to a deal was for live sports but a lot of other Disney programming is not gonna be in the bundle anymore, like FXX and some of the other channels that they had, uh, that they've been running for a long time, yeah. that will no longer be included. So this is a big story because even though they were able to come to a deal, we don't know yet what the financial terms and all of that look like. The fact that a cable company was willing to stand up and be like, I'm not paying you what you want, that has never really happened before whenever it came to ESPN. And it shows the diminishing power of Disney and of these cable companies, and it's a foreshadowing of what I think will come with CNN, Fox, and MSNBC yeah. in the years to come. Um, yeah, it's notable that, number one, they came to a deal hours before, I think yeah. it was Monday Night, Monday Night Football, right. was uh, set to air. So clearly, like, the live sports part, part of it it was really critical to them feeling, all right, we gotta figure out something here. But the underlying business story is really interesting because Disney, to use you know one example here, they feel like the streaming is their company's future. Mm -hmm. However, right now it's not really profitable for them. So 
Today, with their business model, the uh, cable carry fees are far more profitable for them. So they're effectively using the money that they're making from this dying industry to subsidize their streaming product that they feel will be the future. And obviously, you know, Charter and other, um, you know, paid cable TV companies are not happy about the fact that they feel like they are subsidizing the very thing that is going to destroy their own business. Mm -hmm. So that's sort of like the core tension here. And Charter wanted uh, Disney streaming apps, Disney Plus, Hulu, ESPN Plus, to be made available at no extra cost to their pay TV customers. And Disney was like, get out of town. There's no way we're doing that. But that's sort of the central fight here. And you know, everybody who's involved effectively recognizes that um, cable TV is a dying format. And so everyone's trying to protect what they see as the future and, you know, for Charter to be able to protect what they have and hold on to it as long as they possibly yeah. can. And so that's why this fight is so interesting, because it really foreshadows some of the battles to come. And just the fact that this is um, this whole model is dying before our eyes. Well, I can only hope I, I wish Charter had not given in. I wish they could have let him burn, but it's OK. We'll get we'll get there one day. I'll, I'll enjoy seeing it. Hey, guys, if you like that video, go to breakingpoints.com, become a premium subscriber and help us build the best independent media organization on the planet. That's right. We're subscriber funded. We're building something new. We want to replace these failing mainstream media organizations. So again, to subscribe, it's breakingpoints.com.